Hello, everyone. I'm Lana Zak. Thanks for joining us here on CBS News. We continue to bring you the very latest on Hurricane Idalia from the aftermath in Florida to its diminishing strength as it makes its way through Georgia and South Carolina. Hurricane Idalia is headed north right now towards Georgia after leaving major flooding behind in Florida. This is drone footage taken above Crystal River, Florida on the north Gulf side. Idalia made landfall just before 8 o'clock this morning. And so far, the brunt of the damage appears to have been from flooding. Governor Ron DeSantis says crews are just now getting their first looks at the damage. We're still assessing what is all going on on the ground in the places that had the, the initial impact. And so we're probably going to be, you know, I'm probably going to try to get down to some of those counties today. Uh, but we've got a lot of people that are going in, uh, offering assistance uh, from the state perspective, helping these, uh, these counties be able to, to stabilize the situation. Well, let's figure out what is the very latest happening with Idalia. Now joining us in Studio 57 is CBS News New York Chief Meteorologist Lonnie Quinn. So, Lonnie, what should we expect? Okay, you should expect the storm to get weaker by the minute. But it's still a rainmaker. But in terms of you know, whether it's a Cat 4 or a Cat 3 or a Cat 2, it's going to be decaying. And I can show you what we're talking about. So here's our system, 75-mile-per-hour winds. Your borderline, yes, it's a Category 1. It gets to 73, which it will. It's going to become a tropical storm, then it, it just you know, decays from that point moving forward. But still putting down plenty of rain. The saving grace, the best part about this storm, and I don't, I, that's a strange phrase to use, right? Because this has been devastating for portions of, especially the Big Bend area in Florida. But the best part of it, the speed. It has been moving. I mean, this thing is on its horse, 20 miles per hour. I've covered these systems uh, going back to, uh, it's over, I mean, 2001 I started doing this, right? I've watched them all, and typically, my rule of thumb is that big tropical systems, be it a hurricane, even a strong tropical storm, they move slowly through the Gulf Coast states, and then when they get to that Mason-Dixon line, boom, they really start to pick up. Right? This one, moving at 20 miles per hour, has been the saving grace, as bad as our storm surge has been. We had one reading of almost 10, foot, 10 feet of storm surge, uh, like around Cedar Key. Could have been worse. Remember, the projections were possibly, at one point, they're thinking 12 to 16 feet. Well, we had 10 feet out there, saving grace, like I said, because of how quickly it was moving. It's moving at 20 miles per hour. That is so fast. But if you look at the storm, I talk about how it's a decaying system. Pretty easy for me to show you because this is your eye, okay? The tighter wrapped the hurricane is, meaning the smaller that eye is, the more intense the storm is. Hmm. A great analogy right here. Think about, all right, follow me on this. Think about a figure skater, all right? When that figure skater is finishing his or her routine, Arms are out wide, moving slowly. To move quicker, they pull their arms in, and then they really start to rapidly uh, spin. That's the same system. That the same works as a hurricane. The same system sort of works for a hurricane. But you can also see right here, I talk about it decaying. All right? This is the southern portion of the eye wall right here. First of all, that eye is now enormous. It was much tighter earlier today. You can see, if you see right here around the J in Jacksonville, see how it's almost broken through. Once you break that line of moisture, it's going to start pulling in dry air, and the dry air will really decay it very quickly. But look at this. You've got bands of heavy rain all the way down around Fort Myers, and yet this is your system. So it's putting down a lot of rain. This area shaded in yellow, by the way, throughout the southeast coast. Uh, tornado watches, all right? Tornado watches running at around a 10% risk, according to the Storm Prediction Center. So that's an element of this, and it's not one that we've spoken enough about. We've had one confirmed tornado thus far uh, between Tampa and Orlando. Problem with it is when it's in the middle of a hurricane, you can't see it because it's wrapped in other storms. It's not sitting there like a big funnel cloud approaching your area. Okay, guys, I'm going to finish this up and just quickly show you what we're dealing with as far as storm surge. Right now, the number is still the potential for five to eight feet. The biggest number we had, I told you earlier, was about 10 feet, just shy of 10 feet in Cedar Key. But look at the fastest rise we had anywhere. All right, this is the Steinhatchee River right around Cedar Key. Went from one foot, from one foot to 8.2. One foot to eight, well, 8.02, so one foot to eight feet in less than an hour. That's like watching your bathtub fill up. You actually watch the river level rise. The good news is it has receded very quickly as well. As the storm pushed away, it started pushing the water out of the river. So that's the good news. Uh, but, yeah, there's been a lot of damage and more damage to come. There will be a lot of rain, and it's yet to finish with the southeast coastline. Lana, it's all yours. Well, Lana, I want to ask you about that because we heard President Biden say that this is still dangerous, but then we also mm -hmm. heard South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster say, you know, this, this storm is basically weakened to the point that we're yep. not concerned. We want to get everything back up and running. Who's right? You bet you. Okay. 
I, I think I'm, I'm appreciative of both approaches here. I mean, you do not want to let your guard down and say, okay, look, there's nothing else to worry about. Uh, you know, the president has to say, look, it's still dangerous. And is it dangerous? Yes, I agree, it still is. Is it as bad as it was? It's a fraction of what it was before. But there are plenty of dangers associated with a storm that can still put down an additional, think about this, it can still put down an additional half foot of rain. Let's pull this picture up right here, I'll show you. Wherever you see this dark blue speckled out there, you've already picked up six inches or more of rain. And now we've got a flash flood warning in portions of Georgia, right around Douglas, Georgia. And the potential is there to pick up more rain. This is on top of what has already fallen. All right, so the potential is there to see, well, this area shaded in white, that's a foot of rain in portions of South Carolina and into North Carolina as well. And even those areas where I'm showing you, hey, they've already got six inches on the ground. You could put a little bit more on top of that as well. So. Uh, look, we all talk, we all talk about that sexy number, the, the winds associated with this storm. Well, they have not been overwhelming. We've had stronger winds, but still, coming on shore with 120 mile per hour winds is a strong storm. It's a category three, a major hurricane. The other thing we talk about storm surge, and I'm glad we do, it's without question, Lana, the most deadly portion of a hurricane. But you gotta talk freshwater flooding. You and I were talking just a moment ago. Do you remember we were just talking about when you were covering Harvey, mm -hmm. right? And you talked about how it just sat there and rained and rained and rained. Three to four feet yeah. of rain. And look at the devastation freshwater flooding can do. Absolutely. Lonnie Quinn, thank you. I feel like I just uh. took a master class. <laughs> CBS News national correspondent Manuel Bajorquez, who's watching the storm from Savannah. Manuel, how have the conditions changed since we last spoke? Well, as you can see, the winds are starting to pick up. We've uh, had periods this afternoon with more consistent rain, so the storm is definitely making itself known here. When we spoke earlier, you talked about seeing traffic up along the bridge over there, but if you look now, not a car, not a truck. So that has been shut down uh, because of the potential danger for especially high profile vehicles, given some of the wind gusts that we're now starting to see. Uh, looking back at the river here, this is the Savannah River. Uh, there are times where it really gets going when you get a squall. And so the concern here is not only the, the potential for river flooding and coastal surge, but also flash flooding by the rain that will be coming from uh, coming downstream from other parts in Georgia and uh, South Carolina. Carolina, perhaps, where the storm is dumping a lot of rain right now. So what happens? You have the potential for uh, flooding to come from this side and from this side. That's not a good thing to happen, especially in the low-lying areas, which is why officials have been telling people to stay home and stay off the roads. The other thing we want to point out here is, that, as you see the wind starting to get a little gustier here, is that uh, even if it's not a hurricane anymore, even just a tropical storm, it still has gusts that can knock down power poles and uh, trees. That's a big problem in these parts because there are big trees. You think about Savannah and the iconic hmm. uh, scenes of this city, and they have the potential to, God forbid, fall on homes, uh, but also knock down power lines. And so the big thing here is 5 to 10 p.m., the mayor had said earlier, is the time they thought would be rife with power outages for this specific area as the storm moves through. Uh, Manny, you mentioned trees. We just heard from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis that uh, that he's seeing a lot of trees, a lot of debris from where Idalia has uh, has passed by. Um, they're very familiar in Florida with this, and you're very familiar with covering it. Is Georgia equally prepared to deal with a tropical storm? What looks like it's going to be very soon a tropical storm. You know. I've covered them in Georgia before. They don't happen as often. Um, and there was a sense last night that if this was just a tropical storm moving through here, that people maybe didn't have to get that prepared. Uh, but the problem there is that if it retains its status as a hurricane, well, now you're dealing with something that's bumped up a lot more as far as wind speeds and the potential impacts. Uh, so the other thing you mentioned about Georgia uh, that's a little different uh, than, say, parts of South Florida, where you don't have the type of uh, trees that you have in these more heavily forested areas here is that yes you really do have the potential for a lot more trees being brung down uh, being brought down excuse me by the winds uh, so that's a bigger concern here in Georgia but as well as in the Carolinas you have states of emergency declared in North Carolina uh, in South Carolina as well um, but it, it looks like uh, from everything we're hearing from officials that yes the wind was always going to be a big concern 
But the bigger thing they're trying to make sure here is that especially as the evening hours uh, click by uh, and it starts to, to get darker is that people aren't trying to go out there thinking, oh, the winds aren't that bad because especially at dark, you just don't know when it's flooding how deep or how far it goes. And the other concern that we heard expressed was tornadoes, that even if this weekends that Georgia is still uh, at watching for uh, for tornadoes. Um, how big of a concern right. is that? It's a big concern. Uh, these are uh, things that could happen way outside of the uh, of the still eye of the storm if it still has an eye. Um, so we're not just talking about Georgia in that situation, uh, it being in that situation. We're talking also about potentially the Carolinas. Uh, throughout the day, we have heard the alerts going off on our phones, uh, on the radio. Uh, we're hearing about different counties having tornado warnings and such. Uh, so that's why if you lose power, officials want you to have the ability to keep your phone charged because so many of the warnings, especially the tornado warnings, will be, uh, you know, blared through your phone. We've heard that throughout the day. Uh, so that's probably going to create a, uh, some nervousness with residents, but it's better to be warned than to not know that it's coming. Uh, so for many people uh, here in Savannah and in the low country, uh, the Carolinas, it may be a long evening, hopefully not a long night. Uh, Manny, it sounds like we're hearing the intensity of those raindrops uh, actually pick up over the course of our conversation. So I want to give you an opportunity to uh, dry off just a little bit. Do continue to be safe. Manuel Bajorquez, thank you. We want to go now over to South Carolina. Charleston Mayor John Tecklenburg joins us now. Mayor, thanks for being here. Uh, how are you doing there in Charleston? Are you, you feel fully prepared for the storm? Well, we've been preparing for a few days now. Uh, we do feel like we're ready for what's what's going to come. We've had a named storm on average every year for eight years, so we've we've had a little practice actually. Um, but you, each storm can be individual, and you got to take whatever comes. But um, the biggest concern we had here in Charleston, being a coastal city, was the coincidence of the storm arriving right when we were having a king tide, in this case, actually a blue moon tide, where the king tide happens twice in one month. That's where the name comes from. And um, so we were expecting a big high tide tonight anyway, and add to it the rain bands that we're seeing, um, the rain that's coming, the wind pushing some storm surge up from the Atlantic into the harbor. Uh, that combination uh, leads to flooding. We'd see flooding anyway with just the high tide. So we're pre-positioned to close streets in our city tonight. Uh, we're asking everybody to stay home, to stay put, stay off the road. That's how everyone can remain safe. We believe uh, our forecast for tomorrow is this storm is going to pass right on out. And we're going to have a beautiful weekend, Labor Day weekend, right here in beautiful, historic Charleston. Come on down. Well, you know what, Mayor Tecklenburg, that sounds like quite an invitation. <laughs> I'm going to find it hard to resist it. Um, but <laughs> in the meantime, it sounds like uh, while you're looking forward to, a, to the storm making its way out and having a wonderful Labor Day weekend, uh, what's your message, though, to residents right now? Are you worried that as the storm has been downgraded, that, uh, that people are, are no longer going to heed these warnings about uh, potential storm surge or flash flooding or even tornadoes? Well, we were expecting a downgrading of the storm from the beginning. We knew it would either be a category one, a tropical strong storm, strong tropical storm by the time it got to Charleston. So, but that combination I described to you about flooding is real, even under tropical storm conditions. So for example, we've lowered our retention areas to hold more water. We've strategically put pumps in place to be able to help uh, storm water move out of the city. Um, we've been cleaning drains and street, uh, sweeping the streets with our street sweepers to make sure that drains don't get clogged up. So we've been doing all those preparation things and asking our citizens, above all, just tonight, stay home, take it easy, don't go out, and that's how we stay safe. And we don't put our uh, first responders at risk that way as well. Such an excellent point. Uh, one last question for you, Mayor. Um, your governor, Henry McMaster, said there are no evacuations. Nobody needs to leave at this point. If any of your residents have left, is it a good time for them to come back, or should they wait until the storm's fully passed? 
Well, we, we didn't anticipate having an evacuation order. Some folks uh, uh, do leave town. They, they should wait until after tomorrow to come back. That's, that's for sure. We, we do set up uh, shelters for those who are experiencing homelessness. So there's a place for everyone to have shelter tonight. Um, but yeah, we, we did not anticipate having any evacuation orders. And that's why we stress for folks just to stay, stay home tonight and stay safe. All right. Charleston, South Carolina Mayor John Tecklenburg, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.